this video, we are going to look at problem 1.16 in Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics, 3rd edition. Here we have a particle represented by some wave function, uh, psi of x at t equals 0, where if we're between minus a and plus a, then this is the wave function, and then otherwise, outside of that, uh, we just get 0 for psi. And so we're first asked to uh, determine the normalization constant, capital A. And so in order to do that, let's just get right into it here. I'm going to use a thinner pen. So we'll do the integral from minus infinity to infinity of just psi squared dx. And I'm going to leave off my arguments and, and you know, just write psi as this instead of psi at x at x and t equals zero. Um, instead of doing that, I'll just be a little bit uh, cleaner here with my notation. So of course that's going to equal one. That's just our normalization. Uh, this is the same thing though as saying the integral from minus a to a of psi squared dx is equal to one. And I'll write the rest in a second, but um, you know, outside of minus a to plus a, we are at where psi is just zero. So we can just remove that part from the integral, and we do psi star psi, and so psi squared dx is equal to 1. All right, psi squared is the same as psi star psi. Uh, and then this is equal to integral from minus a to a, and then turns out psi and psi star are the same thing because there's no imaginary um, part here, and so we just have that uh, wave function a times little a squared minus x squared, uh, that whole thing is going to be squared. That's our psi star psi or our psi squared dx, uh, which is equal to, bring the a squared out front, that's the thing we're trying to find, that's our normalization constant, integral minus a to a of a squared minus x squared squared dx. Let's just distribute it in then. So this is equal to a squared integral minus a to a, of a to the fourth minus 2a squared x squared plus x to the fourth dx. Uh, this is obviously a very uh, trivial integral. Uh, we get a squared and then a to the fourth x minus 2 thirds a squared x cubed plus x to the fifth over 5 minus a to a, which is equal to a squared, let's do a big bracket, uh, we'll do a to the fifth, plugging in our, our positive a, so a to the fifth minus two-thirds um, a to the fifth plus one-fifth a to the fifth minus, and now we plug in our minus a, so minus a uh, to the fifth plus two-thirds a to the fifth, so obviously the minus sign got subsumed into that. Um, minus one-fifth a to the fifth, so check all your signs, make sure that you agree with that, but of course subtracting a negative means this one is going to be positive, this one will be negative, this one will be positive, so keep track of those signs. Uh, this is equal to big A squared, let's just bring out the a to the fifth, one minus two-thirds plus one-fifth plus one minus two-thirds plus one-fifth and close the bracket. This is equal to big A squared, little a to the fifth, times 16 fifths. And remember, that was equal to one. That's our normalization. Therefore, A squared, just move everything over, is 15 over 16 A to the fifth. Uh, take the square root, and A is equal to 1 fourth square root 15 over A to the fifth. So that is our normalization constant. Now for part B, it asks us to do expectation value of x. So to do this expectation value, uh, we just plug it into our, our normal formula that we use. So we do psi star times the thing that we're trying to get the expectation value of. So that's our operator x. I'll give it a little x hat so that I remember that's an operator. Uh, psi star x hat times psi, dx. These brackets, I mean, not really do parentheses for all, you, for all I care. It's just trying to keep it separate there. Okay, and this is equal to um, 
And by the way, when I'm doing this, I, I'm, I'm being very formal and I'm separating the psi star and the psi. I keep doing that even though it's just a squared minus x squared. Um, but, you know, there's, there's good reason to do that for future problems, so that's just my recommendation. Um, but anyway, we get an a squared out front. We just found what a squared was, so we can plug that in later. Um, but, uh, or in the next, we'll, we'll plug it in in the next step anyway. But, uh, you know, bring that out front. Um, integral minus a to a, and then a squared minus x squared times our operator x that we're trying to get the expectation value of, and then another a squared minus x squared dx. Okay. This is equal to 15 over 16, a to the fifth. That's our normalization squared, minus a to a, x, a squared minus x squared, squared, dx. And please, when you're doing, um, when you're doing quantum, check when you have uh, symmetric um, bounds on your integral, please check and see if you have an even or an odd uh, in, uh, integrand. And so here, uh, our x is, there's one power of x here, and then there are three powers of x there. Um, well, actually, excuse me, we have to square it. So, um, you know, you can see there's either going to be uh, one power, three powers, or five powers um, once we fully distribute all that. Uh, regardless, though, um, assuming I uh, didn't mess something up there, uh, we should have... Um, a, an odd function. We'll have an odd function with the symmetric bounds that we just discussed. Therefore, the integral equals zero, right? And just remember, uh, quick reminder, odd function, maybe it looks something like that, you know, I, it, it wouldn't actually, but I'm just saying, you know, this uh, this part, when you add it up from minus a to plus plus a, you know, is going to cancel with that part. That's just a general odd function, and so we don't have to worry about that integral. So our expectation value of x is equal to zero. Uh, moving on to part c now, we want to find the expectation value of our operator p. Okay, well that is equal to minus integral, uh, the integral of minus infinity to infinity, be more clear there. Uh, psi star times the thing we're trying to get the expectation value of times psi dx with our p operator equal to minus i h bar d dx. Uh, from here, um, let's go ahead and pull the minus i h bar out front along with our a squared. So this is equal to minus i h bar um, times a squared and then the integral minus a to a of a squared minus x squared. And here is why I said uh, we don't want to, you know, just combine, combine psi star psi because we, we still have that d dx acting on a squared minus x squared dx. So that d dx needs to act on just that. Okay, so we have a minus i h bar, normalization constant squared, integral minus a to a, a squared minus x squared times minus 2x dx. Uh, once again, uh, the, integrad, uh, the integrand is odd on symmetric, it's odd and it's on symmetric bounds, so, you know, not writing everything, um, but it's uh, an odd integrand, and it's on symmetric bounds. We're going from minus a to a, therefore it equals zero. Okay, thus p, expectation value of our momentum is equal to zero. Now, the question asks why we can't simply do m times the time derivative of the expectation value of x in order to get the expectation value of the momentum. So why can't we do m dx dt? Uh, and, and I believe that what Griffiths is getting at here is that we only know the expectation value of x at time t equals zero. So let me just scroll all the way back up here. Uh, this is at time t equals zero. So you shouldn't take a time derivative. You know, if you try to take d dt 
of expectation value of x, well, everything we've just done is at a time, at time t equals 0. And so uh, we can't get the expectation value of momentum directly from that. So we just, you know, do the normal way. And the normal way is not much work anyway. And so, you know, it works out fine. From here, let's move on to part D. We have expectation value of x squared equals what? Let's do that. Um, so we have integral minus infinity to infinity, psi star x squared times psi dx. As always, x squared is the operator itself already. So we have a uh, normalization constant squared out front, integral minus a to a, and then uh, let's just skip to the next line, x squared, and then we're going to have a squared minus x squared quantity squared. So that's going to be a to the fourth minus 2a squared x squared plus x to the fourth. And I skipped a couple lines there. Uh, it's just simple algebra. Um, I'm going to make this uh, uh, a little bit easier. This is an even, even integral. Um, so we have uh, even powers of x. So let's just multiply it by 2 and go from 0 to a instead of minus a to a. So we're going to have 2 times, and then what's our normalization constant squared? Well, that's 15 over 16 a to the fifth. Go from 0 to a of a to the fourth, and then x squared, bring that x squared in, minus 2 a squared x to the fourth plus x to the sixth dx. Uh, let's see, this is equal to 15 over 8a to the 5th, and then doing that integral, you should get a to the 4th x cubed over 3 minus 2a squared x to the 5th over 5 plus x to the 7th over 7. Make that clear, over 7. Evaluate at 0 to a. And so obviously when we evaluate at zero, uh, when we subtract that part off, all of these terms have x in them, so they'll all go to zero. So we're just doing the first part then. So this is equal to 15 over 8, a to the fifth. And then just look, we're going to have seven powers of a in each of these terms. So let's just bring out an a to the seventh. And then this is going to be the quantity one-third minus two-fifths plus one-seventh. Uh, do the algebra if you don't see it. Um, this is going to go, a to the fifth is going to go away. We're going to be left with a squared right there. And uh, let's see, this is going to be equal to 15 over 8. And then we got a squared. And then when you actually do this, um, I have the number here. It's going to come out to 8 over 105. And then your 8s will cancel. 15 out of 105 uh, should be 7. Yep, so we get a squared over 7. So our expectation value of the x operator squared is equal to a squared over 7. Uh, next we do for part E, expectation value of our p operator squared. So again, p is uh, minus i h bar uh, d dx. So when you put two of those together, the minus and the minus cancel, but the i squared gives you another minus sign. So p squared, p operator squared, is equal to minus h bar squared d squared dx squared. So then taking the expectation value, this is equal to the integral minus infinity to infinity. We're getting very comfortable with this now. Um, psi star, p operator squared, psi dx. And of course, we don't separate the psi, or we, we do separate the psi star from the psi because we know that we're going to have this uh, second derivative acting on the psi to the right. So we need to, we need to keep track of that. So this is equal to, let's bring the minus h bar squared out front, and then we still have our normalization constant squared integral minus a to a, and then we have the first a squared minus x squared, and then we have d squared by dx squared, and on the other a squared minus x squared dx. Um, okay, this is equal to, let's actually do this derivative first. So 
Uh, first derivative here is going to be minus 2x. Uh, second derivative is going to be minus 2. So the minus 2 is going to come out front, and we get minus 2 times minus h bar squared is equal to positive 2h bar squared, expectation value of a squared, minus a to a, and then we just have a squared minus x squared dx. Um, this is an even integral again, so let's just multiply the, uh, it's an even integrand, and so we can multiply the integral by 2 and go from 0 to a instead. So we have 4h bar squared, and then what was a squared? Well, that's going to be 15 over 16 a to the fifth, integral 0 to a, uh, a squared minus x squared dx. Uh, the 4 will cancel there, so you have a 4 left. This is equal to h bar squared times 15 over 4a to the fifth. And then let's actually do our integral. Um, be a squared x minus x cubed over 3, and evaluated from 0 to a. So this is equal to 15, oops, 15 fourths h bar squared over a to the fifth times we're going to have an a cubed that we can pull out this time, obviously, and so these terms are going to go to zero on the on the um, when we evaluate at zero. Uh, so we'll pull out an a cubed, and we get one minus a, a third, which is obviously a two uh, two thirds. Um, so plug that into the algebra, and therefore expectation value of our p operator squared is equal to five h bar squared over two a squared. So just simple one-line algebra, and you should get there. Okay, we've done a lot. We're, all, we're, we're getting close. So now for part F, it asks us to calculate sigma x. Uh, sigma x is just the square root of expectation value of x squared minus the expectation value of x quantity squared. Um, the latter of those was 0. We found that first, so expectation value of x is 0. When you square it, it's still 0. So there you go. And sigma x is equal to then the square root of a squared over 7 is what we found for expectation value of x squared, um, which is equal to a over square root 7. So that's sigma x. For part g, we want sigma p. Same idea, expectation value of p squared minus just the expectation value of p quantity squared. Here, once again, the latter of these is 0. When you square it, it's still 0. So this is equal to the square root of 5h bar squared over 2a squared minus 0 is equal to the square root of 5 halves times h bar over a. So that's our sigma p. Square root of 5 halves, h bar over a. Uh, and then we just need to verify that the uncertainty principle has been, has been good. Uh, I wrote an h bar there. I should just write an h written too many h bars. Okay, so to verify the uncertainty principle, sigma x, sigma p should be greater than or equal to h bar over 2. We just need to check that. Uh, and so when you actually multiply these together, we get a over uh, root 7, a over square root 7, uh, times square root of 5 halves uh, h bar over a. And that is equal to, do some canceling, a will cancel with that one, and this is equal to square root of uh, 5 over 14 times h bar, which is equal to the square root of uh, 10 over 7 times h bar over 2 which is indeed, which is greater than h bar over 2. You can do the math. Uh, square root of 10 is obviously bigger than square root of 7, so that number is greater than 1. It comes out to about 1.2. So it's about 1.2 times h bar over 2. Regardless, it's greater than h bar over 2, so Heisenberg's uncertainty principle has been verified. And that is the end of the problem.